Well, good morning. Good morning. My name's Ken. I think I've, I've met many of you just as you've come in, and uh, it's good to do that. Um, looking forward very much to getting to know you over these next four months. Um, a time of change for us all, with, uh, for you, uh, not having Ross here and uh, getting used to me, and for me, stepping back into work for a, a period of time and preparation and ministry. I'm um, looking forward to, to all that that has in store for us. We're going to begin with a, a call to worship, and it's one that I'm, I went digging back through archives of files to find something that we used to use um, when I was the pastor at Wonthaggy. We, we started having um, Easter Sunday morning sunrise services out at Eagle's Nest near, near Inverloch, and um, this was, a, this was I've, I've adapted this from something that we used in those days as a, an Easter call to worship if you can respond in the blue parts. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us we affirm the word given on the first Easter morning. Christ is risen. He is risen. Christ is risen. His presence through us is joy. His love remains us. Yes, hallelujah. <laughs> We're going to sing the, the beautiful song, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. Be still for the Let's join in prayer. Almighty God, loving Lord, gathered here now in this place and for others at home and others who will watch later, we acknowledge your steadfast, faithful love which never ceases. You, Lord God, are greater than anyone or anything else. 
You're the creator and the sustainer of life. You're all powerful. You raised your son, the Lord Jesus, from death. Hallelujah, we say. You are holy and just. Great and mighty are your ways. We confess that we easily become distracted from wholehearted commitment. We find ourselves sinning in word or thought and motive or action. And as we repent of our sin, we do so in the sure knowledge of your faithful and just promise to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We thank you for that amazing grace and love that you've shown to us and the confidence that we have in it. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll sing together again as we sing the song, Jesus. What a beautiful name. You can be seated. Hand over to Betty. Good morning. And a very warm welcome to Ken, our interim pastor. We're delighted to have you with us this morning and his wife, Robin. We hope that your time with us over the next few months will be really special for you and for us. We've entered into a a new journey without Ross and um, as I left home this morning I said to Alec, now we'll see the things that Ross does that nobody else does. Because you know and I know that Ross is a perfectionist, a bit like me, and um, he likes to keep on control of everything and he often has everything set up when we get here. So we've had to set up from scratch this morning and we've had a few little interesting um, things but we're learning. Um, And um, that's um, that's what it's all about. So we're trusting that they're having a wonderful holiday and their first stress-free service for a long time. Very warm welcome to those who are watching on Zoom and on YouTube. Uh, We welcome you and any visitors who may be here this morning. We hope your time with us is a very very special one. Um, I didn't see anybody here in the car park when we arrived, so if anybody came early and was too embarrassed, you've obviously gone home. So you're well aware now that daylight saving has ended. Um, And if you're one of the people who love to be on Eastern Standard Time, like me, I'm really happy that daylight saving's over. As you know, COVID's still around. I got COVID on our two-week cruise and was holed up in a cabin for four four nights. Alec got it as soon as we got home. Um, So take your normal precautions as you do. We're learning to live with it in the community. We only had a very um, small, minor cold, which wasn't any of significance, but... If you are sick, um, as you know, please don't come to church. Just watch it on 
um, YouTube or, or um, um, Zoom. Uh, and if you want to wear a mask, that's fine if you feel comfortable. Special birthdays this week. Um, on Tuesday the 9th, Esther Stitt and Stuart Orford have their birthdays. And on Thursday, Karen Shields. So a very special birthday greetings to those people. Um, very special days. Prayer is available at the close of the morning service. Robin's on duty this morning for prayers and if anybody wants prayer, um, please just come forward and um, you may want prayer for you or you may just want prayer for somebody else um, or just the lift for your week. Uh, it's a very special thing when we pray for one another and it's important. As you know, morning tea will follow the service and it's good to chat to the people on Zoom who are now situated just around the corner. They love to see who's here and have a time of um, conversation with you when they can't come to church physically. The friendship group um, ran the, organised the lunch tomorrow. Um, so if you haven't told Rain, it's probably too late. So um, we hope that you'll enjoy that, that special time for lunch tomorrow. The April Inform, thanks to Pam and um, Elaine and those who have been editing it, is now out. Please check your rosters so that you turn up on the days that you're rostered and if you can't, you know that you can switch with somebody else. Um, we're just relying on people to be sensible about the rosters. The finance update, um, we're running just a little bit behind budget. So um, that's not bad at the moment, so we're trusting that our offerings will continue to come. If you still want to give to the Mandama Breakfast Appeal, um, it's not too late. You can do it through the um, website and just mark it Mandama Breakfast. Church Council meets on Tuesday here at 3 o'clock. Um, so if you've got any burning issues that you still want Council to raise, talk to myself or Ray or Jen um, or, or um, Ken. Um, he'll be chairing and I'll be taking the notes. Pastoral care, um, if you have issues, contact Jewel or Ken. But remember that Ken's only working two days a week. He'll be here on Mondays and Tuesdays. So there's lots of people who can pick up the pastoral care. Please remember to pray for each other. We've got a number of prayer chains operating, um, either digitally on Zoom or by phone. And there are a lot of people who are quite sick at the moment and need our, our prayers. I'm just going to tell you briefly about that wonderful answer to prayer. Um, before we went away, Alec lost his left hearing aid and we'd been searching for it for a week and some of you, I think, had actually been praying that we would find it. We had the church folk at Lifestyle praying for us as well and we looked in all the logical places and then we started looking in the illogical places and Alec can monitor his batteries on his phone and we knew for a few days that he had power in the left battery so it must have been somewhere in the house. But do you think we could find it? No. And on the morning we were leaving, which is three weeks ago today, I remember saying to God, I'm really disappointed because you know where it is and you could have shown us. And this is going to be really difficult on the cruise when Alex only got partial hearing on that side. Um, but I'm trusting you that you are sufficient for everything. And so I did a bit of a clean up. We packed our cases. I looked at my clock and we had an hour before we were going to be picked up. And I got this incredible urge to vacuum. Have you ever had an incredible urge to vacuum? <laughs> Not normally my, my forte. And Alex said, what on earth are you doing? And I said, I just think, well, if I vacuum now, we'd come home to a really clean house and it would use up my hour. So I really got stuck into the vacuuming and I was down in our walk-in robe and I was going in and out right under my clothes, which I don't go. If you, if you vacuum like I do, you just do the walk areas often. And I got right in underneath and I heard clickety-click and out came the hearing aid in two pieces. Half an hour before we left and I said to Alec, I found your hearing aid. And I said, I don't know whether it's going to work. But anyway, he put it together with some tape and it did work. And isn't that we worship an amazing God, right? And I've got a wonderful photo of Alec on the ship where he's sitting chatting to a group of people where it was busy and there were lots of things going on and they were on his left-hand side and he was having an animated conversation and I just said, we worship an amazing God. So that's why we pray. And lastly, um, it's a while since we've had a lunch out. Um, I'm going to suggest that two weeks today, and I'll finalise the numbers next week, 
we go out for lunch at your own cost. We just choose a nice place that's not too expensive and we just have a social time after church at about 12 o'clock. Can I have a quick show of hands of those who might be interested two weeks today? Few, enough to make it worthwhile. All right, I'll put out some information in the week and uh, we'll just do that and have a social time. KYB is not starting for another couple of weeks so it gives me time after church on a Sunday. So thank you for listening to all of that and I'll hand back to Ken. Thank you. So if we get an urge to do vacuuming, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it'd take a lot to get me to <laughs> respond. <laughs> let's, um, let's join in prayer in prayers of thanksgiving now. Let's, let's pray. Almighty God, you raised your son, our Lord Jesus, from death and in response we, we come with deep thanksgiving, with joy. How, how wonderful your love is and our responses are so often inadequate and yet we've been touched by your love and grace and we want to say thank you to you from the depths of our souls for your grace and love shown to us. And we thank you for many blessings. We've just heard an example of one. We join in giving thanks for the thing that was lost being found and that reminds us of, of uh, biblical stories and of your goodness and of your heart, your love. There are other things for which we're thankful and we can name them quietly in our minds as we think of them. But the rain that we had this week was one that we name as a deep blessing after so many weeks of dry conditions and how thrilling it was to have that good soaking rain and to see the ground soaking it up and plants responding. We thank you for this revision. Your blessings are many. Your goodness and grace are great. And we want to respond to you in, with our whole lives, including in the giving of our offerings. We gladly share in the work of your kingdom and our prayer is that you would use the income that we have shared in our offerings and tithes to bring glory to you. Um, we pray that your work will be enhanced and blessed and that our hearts and lives will be enriched as we've learnt the discipline of, of giving to you and responding in a generous way. We thank you for this congregation and for the friends that we have here, for this church family, and for the warmth of love that we have for one another. And on this Sunday we particularly pray for those who are celebrating birthdays this week. And Esther and Stuart and Karen, um, we lift them up to you and pray that, that their celebrations will be one of, of joy and uh, thanksgiving, of blessing for your love. Um, and so we, we bring our thanks with gratitude and we, we pray um, in the name of Jesus, Amen. Well, now we're going to listen to the Bible reading as Pat comes to read for us from Matthew chapter 14. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Today's reading is Matthew 14, 22 to 34. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea, 
And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. And he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who came in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Genesaret. Thank you, Pat. We're going to sing again now, and it's the song, The Power of Your Love. Such a beautiful song, isn't it? It's one of those classics that deserves to be sung again and again.
Some of you have um, had a sneak look at the uh, service sermon already, I know that, and uh, uh, that's, that's good, it's good preparation, it's good to know that some of the things that we share together will um, be uh, remembered because we look at them or hear them more than once, um, that's good. You will pick up some changes and I won't necessarily have everything the same in, in what I've printed on the, or prepared in the printed document that I had to finish by Tuesday against my normal kind of practice and uh, inevitably there will be little things that creep in that are slightly different. At the age of 12, uh, my family moved to Canada for a few months and uh, my sister and I travelled alone. I was quite young then really, I was just starting high school and we travelled to, to uh, Montreal where our parents were already living and um, it was my 12th birthday and my dad and mum gave me a Bible and uh, in the cover page, I think it was in response to questions that I'd been asking, dad had written, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path, a lamp to guide me. And uh, I think that might be why I'm fascinated when I go on holiday or for walks. I like taking photos of paths and this was uh, two weekends ago at, um, at, up in the forest up behind Anglesey. It's been an important text for my life. It's been a repeating pattern that as I've made myself available to God, so he has led me and I'm sure some of you have experienced that too when you get to a point where you're not sure what to do or even if you are thinking you know what you're doing when you make yourself available to God sometimes things turn around and turn out differently than you might have expected and God leads. And during the four months of my time here with you at Grovedale we will reflect on verses that have been important to us in our formation some of the texts that we will have learned, uh, whether it was at Sunday School or Christian Endeavour or at other times, texts that have been important to us and have influenced our lives. We'll also reflect on some of the songs that have been significant over the years. We'll do that partly looking back and we do that with, with joy and it's, it's good to, to look back but the purpose is not really to just consider the past, it's more to consider how those same texts and songs are still relevant and will still be relevant for us in the present stages of our, our faith development. I was reading this morning Psalm 131, I use the Scripture Union Encounter with God notes each day, um, Psalm 131 where it says, Israel put your hope in the Lord both now and forevermore. Reflecting on the past, sure, but now and evermore, a faith that is to be enacted and lived. I'm a musician and a singer. Uh, I have a keen interest in songs of worship and praise from a diverse range of sources and styles. The first hymn I learned to play on the organ was Great Is Thy Faithfulness. I don't have a favourite, but there are lots and lots of songs from over the years that have helped me to express worship and, and to sing about important themes. And in these days when I'm, I'm sort of um, living a retired life, uh, I've got an organ and a piano at home and I play my music and I've been enjoying each day being able to play some of those songs. Some of the hymns, for example, that have been important at different stages of life for me have been things like, For all the love that from our earliest days has gladdened life and guarded all our ways. All praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. All my song is love unknown. Some of you would probably like to share with me some stories of text and songs that have been important to you and that might be some of the conversations that we share together. Robin and I met when we were studying at Bible College. It's also where we got to know Ross. He came in our third year. And after completing our studies at, um, at the Bible College of Victoria, which was in Lilydale at those days, uh, we moved to Lakes Entrance at the end of 1983, where I'd been appointed as the first permanent pastor of the Baptist Church. It was quite a, a young church, um, young in age, and uh, had part-time temporary pastors up till that point. It was part of a Baptist Union initiative 
to boost Baptist churches in Gippsland at the time. Uh, they placed a lot of trust in me because I was untested. Um, I was inexperienced and I was 26 or 7 or something. Um, I'd only preached two sermons in my life before I even went there and why they thought I was the right person. I was still puzzled but they obviously did some background research and I was mentored by the Reverend Rod Brown in those days and uh, that was, it was like an apprenticeship, it was great. When later I was called to one Thaggy Baptist Church in 1988 as their pastor, that confirmed God's call on my life to pastoral ministry. I'd been thinking maybe I was preparing for overseas mission service and I was ordained while I served at one Thaggy. In 1997 we moved to Wangaratta, which is where our two children were born and that was a miraculous blessing because we'd been married for 16 and a half years and had experienced unexplained infertility. Now we had two children, something to give thanks to God for. We wanted to move closer to Melbourne, back to where our families were. However, in 2003, this is one of those moments when, in obedience, we said yes to going further away than we ever imagined, still in Victoria, but about as far as you can get from Melbourne, up in the, the northwest. Um, at the Southern Mallee Cooperative Parish in Hopeton, Rainbow and Speed, and we lived there for eight and a half years. Yeah, that's the connection. <laughs> Brigadier is just uh, realising the connection with uh, Rainbow and Hopeton. Eventually we moved back to Melbourne where I served for over 10 years as the, the pastor of the Aberfeldy Baptist Church and it was a church that was a very great um, fit for our family and we were extremely thankful to God for, um, for that time we shared at, at Aberfeldy. All four of us were, were very involved. There's a family recently, first game of the season. <laughs> at the, putting my colours up. It's a change from having a Collingwood pastor out the front here, isn't it? <laughs> Or Chris Barn and a friend of mine who was Carlton, I think, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> At the end of September uh, 2022, Robin and I moved to Geelong to live in a house that we had bought uh, in 2017 at, at St Albans Park, so we're just across the river. Um, Robin began a new career as a, in kindergarten and childcare work and, and I left full-time work, full-time pastoral ministry. I knew that it was likely that as I made myself available, there would be opportunities for part-time uh, interim ministry. And sure enough, last year I served the Bunningong Baptist Church. I started on the Sunday after Easter. And this year I'm starting here on the Sunday after Easter. Is this a repeating pattern, I wonder? So when Ross told me of his plans for long service leave and asked me to fill in as interim pastor, I, I felt extremely grateful and, and blessed. It was good timing for me and blessed that he would trust me with this responsibility when after all he's been here for 24 years, he knows this place, this church uh, has taken on much of his personality and his influence is, is great. I'm pleased to offer myself to you as your interim pastor for this time and look forward to getting to know you. I want to honour Ross in this time for his faithful service over all those years to be able to help him to have a, a restful break and to benefit from that without having to be concerned about the life of the church here. And I also want to be supporting you as the people of God in this congregation. In my experience, it's in times of new or refreshed commitment that growth grows and momentum builds and I'm expectant that God will will work to bring new growth in in our lives during this time of change for you as the people here and for me and commencing on the Sunday after Easter is significant I think a time for focusing on what it means that Jesus is risen he's alive today He's at work in our lives. He's present with us. Last Sunday, the 
on Easter Sunday. The reading here was from Matthew 28. And here are a few verses from that reading. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. I titled this sermon, By Blue Galilee. Some of you might recognise that line. In my early days, my dad was a CSSM beach mission leader at Apollo Bay and later at other places, including at Belgrave Heights. And there was a song we used to sing that has remained with me and which came to my mind as I read this Matthew passage that we've read today and the, the one we've referred to from last week. By blue Galilee, Jesus walked of old. By blue Galilee, wondrous things he told. Saviour, still my teacher be, showing wondrous things to me as of old. By Ga Galilee, blue Galilee. My dad's 99. He'll be 100 in October. I was in Melbourne on Thursday, caught the train up and went to visit mum and dad. And, um, um, no, Friday it was, that's right. Um, I told Dad my theme for this morning and he said, oh, do you remember at Belgrave Heights we had a big backdrop painted in the, in the small hall with the Galilee theme? And I said, well, I don't actually remember that, but I remember this song and it's probably where it was pumped into me um, again and again each day as we sang it during those meetings. After the resurrection, when the disciples were facing fears and as we've just read, doubts, some doubts, some doubted. Was Je is it really Jesus? Is he really alive? Am I imagining it? How did this happen? Yet they were also drawn to worship, it says. And the disciples were there in Galilee in obedience to the word that the, the woman brought, uh, the word they'd heard at the, at the, the grave, uh, at the tomb. Um, the angel had said to the women, go there, and they went in obedience there to the place that they'd spent a lot of time with Jesus, especially up around Capernaum at the northern end of the lake, which became a kind of a, a base, a centre for much of Jesus' ministry. They'd spent a lot of time with Jesus at Galilee, where they knew the blessing of his immediate real presence. He was with them. They were with him day in, day out, sharing life with him. As Ross shared with you last Sunday from the Matthew 28 reading, the command came in Jesus' words there, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them and teaching them to observe these things and so on. And then finish with the promise, and surely I am with you to the very end of the age. Jesus gave them this authoritative command because it was God's plan that Disciples would be transformed by their encounter with the risen Jesus. They would be empowered by the Holy Spirit and they would then be instrumental in the ongoing spread of the gospel and uh, to people of all nations that people would come to faith through their shared witness. And in Matthew's account of the resurrection, this is really significant. It's the very last chapter of the book. It's how he finishes his account of, of uh, Jesus' life with this great commission and the promise that comes with it. And it's really upon that promise that I want to focus today in the rest of our time. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So now and right through as far as you can imagine. And he said, I am with you. Always, not I will be, 
if the conditions are right, I, I will be with you and I'm, I might show up from time to time and pop into your life. I'll be there if you call out or something. No, I am. I am with you always. I am. And if you know your Bible, you'll know that I am is kind of a loaded thing, isn't it? A loaded description. Loaded with meaning. We go back to, to the revelation of God to Moses at the burning bush when God declared his name. I am. I'll be who I will be. I'm faithful to my promises. I'll be consistent. I am. I'm the, the ultimate reality. I am. Surely I am with you always. And I think that Jesus is partly reflecting that, that there when he says, surely I'm with you always. I am. He's the one who will remain faithful. With you always. Present with you. Before and behind. Whether we feel it or not. I'm with you always. When things are going well and when things are not going so well, I'm with you always. And Jesus was preparing his disciples for his imminent departure, for his ascension to the Father's right hand. He wouldn't be present with them in the same way that he had previously. Their experience would be different. Nevertheless, he promised, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. His ongoing presence would remain. They would have all of him that they needed to sustain them for living, to nourish and nurture their faith, to inform their faith. As Peter says, everything we need for life and godliness, God gives to us. So today and over the next two Sundays, I want us to consider aspects of this promise of Jesus. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Storms brew. This one's, I think, down uh, somewhere on the Mornington Peninsula. Today I chose a reading from Matthew 14, which reflects the disciples' personal experience of Jesus in an area of ministry where, an uh, area where their Jesus' ministry was concentrated around Galilee, as we noted. Of course, this goes back before the death and resurrection. This is an experience the the disciples had with Jesus. Out on the lake, when there was a furious storm bearing down. In fact, there are two passages in Matthew that I'll talk about this morning where storms were involved and the disciples are out there on the lake when their faith was challenged as they travelled over the waters on Galilee, on rough waters how their faith was challenged and, yes, then strengthened by the presence of Jesus. From the very beginning of Scripture, the waters represent a place of chaos and danger, a place in which God acts to bring help or relief or change Think Genesis 1, 2, with the, earth, with the earth formless and empty, with darkness over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God hovering over the waters. Then out of the chaos God brought order when at his, wor- at his word the waters separated. Or think of the Israelites crossing the Red Sea. God again separated the waters so there was a wall of water on each side and the Israelites passed through safely to escape from Egypt into the land of promise. God provided a way through the water, stacked up on each side, and they weren't saying, oh, this is good. They were probably scared as they went through. This is weird. But nevertheless, God has opened the way through and they got through. And Remember our text, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Back in Galilee, after the resurrection, imagine what it was like for the disciples as they stood there on the shore of Galilee and looked out across the waters. Perhaps taking some time to reflect on experiences that they'd had with Jesus out there on the lake. Whether they spoke about it or thought about it, I don't know, but I imagine they would have. Like the time we read about when Jesus had sent them on alone at night and they found themselves 
um, facing strong winds and relentless waves that made progress very challenging and slow. It was frustrating. Where was Jesus when they needed him? After all, he'd sent them on ahead to get to the other side and he was back there. I don't know what he's doing, but he was, we're told, he was praying. And there they were struggling out there for hours on the water until just before dawn, the situation turned around. Jesus went out to meet them. He was walking on the water. And it wasn't, oh great, Jesus is here. It was, they were terrified. It's a ghost. Then I love the way Matthew reports Jesus' intervention. They cried out in fear, but immediately he said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. I imagine most of us are familiar with this story. We've reflected on Peter's bold words. We're familiar with what happened when he obeyed Jesus' word, come, and then walked out on the water and his fears then overcame his faith as he cried out and began to sink in the turbulent waters, Lord, save me! This is just one of the many times when the presence of Jesus made a real impact. Jesus reached out his hand and caught Peter. He saved him from what had caused him to sink. He saved him from the storm, from the waves. You have little faith. Why did you doubt? He was asking Peter that question, but really I think asking them in the boat to um, explore what's going on in your minds, just as we are, as we explore what it means to have faith in Jesus and this wasn't the first faith lesson on Blue Galilee. There'd been an earlier one, uh, another time when there was a furious storm in Matthew 8 from verse 23 where it says, Then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The, waves, uh, the disciples went and woke him saying, Lord save us, we're going to drown. He replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. Getting into a boat and heading out onto Galilee was a familiar thing for the disciples. We know two of those Stories, we know that, and what, they wouldn't have been the only times they got into boats and went out onto Galilee with Jesus. Sometimes they'd gone out and it was plain sailing. Other times like these, it was a time of rough weather and wind and storm. It's like that for us in life. Life experience can be familiar and straightforward at times, and other times it's like turbulent, Everything is going on at once. The fears rise because we feel like we're on stormy seas. Things are really challenging and hard. Storms come in quickly. Weather can change very fast, very, very rapidly. Um, think of the rain that's happened in Sydney this week and the damage that's come and in life, things change quickly. Ups and downs, panic, fear and danger can set in. We go through unsettling times. Life is like that, a, a mixing of, of um, plain sailing and stormy seas. One of the things that strikes me about this story is that the disciples were in the boat with Jesus. He was present. Admittedly, he was sleeping through this fierce squall. But he was there. He was with them. And as we face challenges that pop up when life seems unpredictable, whether it's about a COVID or a battle with cancer or the loss of a job or some relationship difficulties or the, um, the loss of someone close to us or we've had to move out of home, we're facing a change in our living arrangements, 
whether they're physical, spiritual or emotional kind of storms or whether they're personal and private or whether they're public kind of storms, things that we've been through in the past or now, these are the things that we're thinking about today when we think about Jesus' promise. What do we do when life changes, when the storms hit? Well, for the disciples it was to think we're going to drown, to panic. And yet the disciples had someone with them who had the capacity to turn the situation around. He was there with them in the boat. When the strong winds are blowing, I I long for calm. There are times I've... I reckon I've walked out into the backyard at times in some places where we've lived where it's been really windy and I'm a bit over it and I walk outside and just want to say, peace, be still to that wind that's relentless and blowing things around and blowing over my plants. I wish I could have rescued my dahlia that blew over on Monday and snapped off. (laughs) The disciples went and woke Jesus. They went, it's really fascinating, they're in a little boat They went and woke him. It was a deliberate act. I think that's what we're meant to understand. Mustn't have been far, but they went deliberately now to turn to Jesus. They woke Jesus. The one who was with them, who who had what they needed, and he got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters and the storm subsided and all was calm. It was a nature miracle. He rebuked the wind and the waves. What do we do when we're in trouble, when we're in that kind of situation? Who do we call? Where's Ross when we need him? There's someone with us who has promised never to leave or forsake us. Remember Jesus' promise, surely I am with you always. He's the one who sees and knows. He is close. Reach out to him. Go to him. And so we refer back to the question that Jesus asked in chapter 8, verse 26, and chapter 14, verse 31. You have little faith, he says. Where is your faith? I wonder what his tone was. Challenging them. Have you forgotten to have faith? I don't think it's saying, you know, you've completely lost it, you haven't got any faith. It's more a forgetful kind of faith. You've just in this moment, you've forgotten to turn to the one who can help you. Where's your faith? In whom is your faith? It's Jesus, the one who is there with you, who promised not to leave, to be with you, right through the straightforward times and the stormy times. Where is the faith I expected you to have in such times? A faith grounded in God's word and in his promises and in testimony and in the personal experiences that we've had previously that have informed our faith and kept us faithful to him. Jesus implies they ought not to have been terrified but should have trusted in him because he was there with them. The point of the story is not simply that Jesus could still the storm but rather that the disciples could have trusted his power to help them. They could have turned to him earlier. Where is your faith? A pastor or a mentor or a a parent or a good friend or a spouse might well ask us that question at times as I have been asked. Where is your faith when we're going through a struggle, a difficulty, a challenge, a stormy time? In these two experiences at Galilee, in the past, the disciples had had their faith informed and strengthened and now, back at Galilee, post-resurrection, they're coming to a deeper realisation of Jesus' identity and his call on their lives. He's reminded them of the promise that he had given. He tried to tell them that he was going to be raised from the dead and they hadn't really got it, but now it's starting to really come into being and they are able to imagine what it's like that Jesus will be with us as he promises. What kind of man is this, they asked. They'd had opportunity to learn of Jesus. They worshipped him saying, truly you are the son of God in the reading today from Matthew 14. 
And now again, back in Galilee after the resurrection, they, they're faced with the reality. Some doubted, it says, and again, they're struggling with their faith, but others worshipped him. And gradually, as it came to full realisation and they accepted what had happened, they entered into that worship and trust and faith in Jesus and a willingness to obey that call that he put on their lives to go. We remember that promise and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. To the Galilees that we are facing, the situation that we have, that we know about back home or at work or at school, wherever it is might be a long way away and we feel like we can't be there where we want to be a Galilee of some kind a place we meet with Jesus we turn to him the one in whom we place our faith and we want to renew our faith and express our trust as we turn to him he is the one who has promised and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Let's take these words to heart and remember them, taking them deep into our hearts and our minds and remembering that promise. Let's join together in prayer. Almighty God, loving Father, we turn to you in Jesus' name. We pray through your spirit. We want our prayers to be led and influenced and guided as your spirit stirs within us. Today we lift up trouble spots around the world where there's a, a need for peace, desperately needy situations where people are in distress, where the issues are complex and hard and world leaders are struggling to figure out what is the right response. Have mercy, Lord. Grant wisdom. And we pray that righteousness and truth will prevail, that goodness and faithfulness of God will be evidenced. God, will you hear our prayer? Today we pray for Christians who are persecuted and struggling because of the resistance that there is to them sharing their faith and in this second last day of Ramadan we pray for for believers in Muslim countries and with Muslim family members we pray for them as they seek to follow Jesus and be true to that that uh, faith that they have professed and Lord we pray that in these days of um, Muslim intent to uh, be deeply spiritual, that there will have been dreams and the sharing of gospel in ways that will have had profound and will have ongoing profound influence and impact in many places. We pray for mission organisation MAF in New Guinea struggling to get the fuel they need to supply um, to keep their planes flying with new arrangements that have come in, the extra costs that are involved, grant them wisdom. And just one example of, of an organisation seeking to witness to the gospel and to serve the church, to witness for you, Lord. Hear our prayers. We lift up people working to s share the gospel in many ways and many places. We think of the churches of Geelong as they, together, we serve you here. Bless the churches of Geelong, we pray. Then today we, of course, lift, lift up Ross and Dorothy and we pray that their, their time of leave will be one of deep refreshing and renewal. Guide their steps and plans. Be with them, Father, through this time. Then we lift up those of our friends here in this congregation who are very unwell, for whom life is challenging at the moment. You know their needs. Some of us can name them in our minds, just now in our quiet prayers. And we'd add to them some of our own family and friends who are facing life challenges in various ways. We lift up such people to you right now in our quietness of our own hearts.
almighty and everlasting God, you, you raised the Lord Jesus to your right hand on high. We rejoice in his exaltation. We pray in his name. And we thank you for the assurance that you hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to sing uh, the song that I'm kind of slightly familiar with it and not deeply familiar with it, so you'll be helping me sing this song, Come People of the Risen King. Go now, trusting in the risen Christ who has promised to always be present. He sends us out as his witnesses, energised by the Holy Spirit to serve him and to make disciples. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we'll sing together. <laughs> 